What are the most exciting new cars coming in the next few years? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you. You see, I've put together an A to Z list of the best new cars coming from every major manufacturer. So even though all the motor shows have been cancelled this year due to COVID yet again, you can still get a close look at all the cars you'll soon be able to buy. I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. And here's my A to Z list of all the best new cars coming soon. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Alfa Romeo is launching a brand new SUV called the Toenail. Sorry, it's Tonale. Anyway, it looked like this concept car, but it'll use a load of bits borrowed from the Jeep Renegade. Hmm. That's because Alfa and Jeep are both part of the same Stellantis parent company. The Tonale, Toenail, will come with a range of small petrol engines, and there'll also be a plug-in hybrid version along later. There won't be any V6 twin turbo like you get with the Stelvio Quadrifoglio though. Sorry. Now, if you fancy a Tonale Toenail thingy, it'll cost you about £35,000 when it arrives later this year. And it's just revealed the new e-tron GT and RS e-tron GT. But these aren't the only electric cars the brand will launch this year. Oh no. There'll also be a new Q4 e-tron and a Q4 e-tron Sportback. These will be a bit smaller than the current e-tron SUV, but they'll have around 300 miles of range and more than 300 horsepower. If electric SUVs aren't really your thing, then there's also a new Audi RS3 in the works. Yeah, get in! This will get a 2.5 litre five-cylinder engine like in the current car and all previous RS3s, but it should have a bit more power than before, so you can keep up with the 421 horsepower AMG A45S. Now, the new RS3 will set you back more than £50,000 when it goes on sale in 2022. Audi will also give the A8 saloon a few tweaks this year to keep it looking fresh, so it'll get redesigned bumpers, upgraded engines, and some new technology to help keep it up with the new Mercedes S-Class. BMW has just launched the new M3 and M4, but there'll soon be an M4 convertible, who wants that? And for the first time ever, an M3 Touring. Yes, they'll both come with that huge grill, but with an arse that good, who cares about the face, eh? These cars will get 480 horsepower as standard and 510 horsepower in competition form. We'll probably only get the competition models in the UK, but the rest of the world, you guys in Germany, and um, probably some people in South Africa, will get the low power version option as well. The range will kick off in the UK from around 75,000 pounds. That huge grille will also pay out on the new four series Grand Coupe. That car will be a four door version of the four series when it goes on sale in 2022. There'll also be a new two series along at the same time, and yes, it's a two series coupe, not the Gran Turismo Tourer blah 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 thingy, which is actually a front wheel drive car. This will be a rear wheel drive car, so it's based off the same platform as the three and the four series. However, that car will get some three cylinder and four cylinder engines from the three series. There will be an M2 version though, with a three litre straight six, with around 420 horsepower, probably rising up to 450 actually. There will also be a new BMW X8 along before 2023. So this will be even more expensive than an X7 thanks to its coupe style body and because 8 is always more expensive in BMW land. Now it'll come with petrol, diesel, yeah really diesel, and hybrid engines. They'll probably cost more than £80,000 at starting price before you've added any options. And that's not the only luxurious BMW on the horizon. A new 7 series has been spotted testing as well. This will come with boatloads of tech and it'll be offered as a pure electric model called the i7 for the first time. This should have dual electric motors and more than 400 miles of range. Cupra, also known as Seat Sporty Division, but it's now a brand in its own right. Anyway, Cupra has just launched a new five-cylinder version of the Four Mentor SUV with 390 horsepower. It's basically an Audi RS Q3 with a fancier body, but it'll only come in left-hand drive, even in the UK. Why? It's not all bad news because Cupra is also working on its first all-electric car. So this is based on the Volkswagen ID3, but it looks a bit sportier and it's called the Born, as in a baby was born, a star is born. I wonder if there'll be a trim level called the Ultimatum. So this car will get the same 62 kilowatt hour battery and 204 horsepower electric motor as the top of the range ID3, but it'll probably be a bit pricier. After this, Cooper will launch a new electric SUV, which will look a bit like the Tavascan concept from 2019. It will use lots of bits borrowed from the Volkswagen ID4, and it should manage a range of about 300 miles between charges, but you'll have to wait until 2024 to be able to get your hands on one. Dacia recently showed off its new Bigster SUV, 
cool name, isn't it? Sadly, it's just a concept car for now, but it will inspire a new Dacia production car that'll go on sale before 2025. So it'll be bigger than the Duster and should get some hybrid engines borrowed from Renault. I just hope they don't change the name. Big stuff. I've got big stuff. DS revealed its new nine saloon last year, and it's a sort of hybrid S-Class alternative. It'll cost you around 50,000 pounds when it goes on sale. Very, very soon, actually. If that's a bit too expensive for you to spend on a French car, there's also the new DS4. So this is a posh looking SUV with a range of petrol and plug-in hybrid engines. So this car will set you back from 25,000 pounds, which is about the same as a Mercedes GLA or BMW X1 starts at. So this DS4 will go on sale in November, 2021. Moving on to Hyundai. So the Korean manufacturer is working on loads of new electric cars, all under the Ionic name. The first one will be the Ionic 5, which is an alternative to the Volkswagen ID4. It gets a cool angular design and has a range of about 290 miles. Now you can get it with one or two electric motors, depending on what amount of performance you want. And the fastest version does not just 60 miles an hour in 5.2 seconds. That's quicker than a Honda Civic Type R. First edition, Project 45, as they're known as models, will cost around £45,000 when they go on sale in summer 2021. And I have to say, I think Hyundai's design for this car is really, really good. The Germans should be worried. Yeah, it's a lot better looking than their new Tucson. Oh, let's put the cat amongst the pigeons again. Yeah, if you don't know what I'm talking about, click on the pop-out banner up there to watch my video of the Hyundai Tucson. It's a bit kind of rude about the design of that car. The next Ionic model that Hyundai will launch will be the 6. So it's an all-electric saloon that will look like the awesome Prophecy concept from 2020. And there'll be a bigger Ionic 7 SUV along in 2024. Hyundai has also found time to cook up some new high-performance end cars which is good, I like the end cars. So there's a new 204 horsepower i20N with a 1.6 litre turbocharged petrol engine. This will do 0 to 60 miles an hour in 6.7 seconds and should cost less than 25,000 pounds when it goes on sale next year. And there's also a new Kona N SUV. This will get the same two litre engine as in the i30N hatchback with 250 horsepower as standard and 275 horsepower in the performance model, which of course will be the model that you want. Hyundai hasn't revealed the finished Kona N yet though. Oh, but the wrap should come off sometime later next year. Hopefully it'll look better than the standard Kona. Not a fan of that car. Next we come to Kia. So this Korean manufacturer will launch seven electric cars by 2027. But it's only shown them in moody RT teaser images. One will definitely be a small SUV based on the Hyundai Ioniq 5. So it'll have almost 300 miles of range and come with the option of one or two motors. And there's also a 7 seat SUV in the pipeline. This will be similar to the Hyundai Ioniq 7, but it won't go on sale until 2024. Obviously, Kia is benefiting from being owned by Hyundai because they can share lots of technology across the two different companies. Now we come to Land Rover and some interesting news about the new Defender. So it's not exactly fast, that car, but Land Rover's fixed that by making a new 5-litre supercharged V8 version. So it gets 525 horsepower and does 0 to 60 miles an hour in 4.9 seconds. If you want to see me drag race that car, let me know in the comments below. I'll put a pinned comment there. I want you to comment which cars we should drag race that against, okay? Let me know and we'll try and set that up. Mercedes has just launched the electric version of the GLA known as the EQA and I've done a review of it. If you want to see that video, put a link popping out in the top right corner of the screen. Click on that, you can go watch it. There's also a link in the description if that pop-out banner isn't working for you. Now the car that I drove had 190 horsepower and it was a bit slow for an electric car. Thankfully though, Mercedes is now adding an extra motor to the car. So combined, it'll put out 270 horsepower. There'll also be an electric version of the GLB called, unsurprisingly, the EQB. This will have around 265 miles of range and should go on sale before 2022. Mercedes is also going to launch two electric saloons called the EQE and the EQS, which obviously are E-Class and S-Class size. There'll also be an SUV currently called the EQS SUV. See what they did there? Well, the marketing guys, they got paid well for that. All these models will be able to drive for up to 432 miles between charges and they'll come with Mercedes brand new hyperscreen infotainment system, which looks awesome. It's like an iMac screen for your dashboard. That could be a bit distracting. Mercedes isn't just working on electric cars though because AMG is getting ready to reveal the new AMG C63. This will be based on the brand new C-Class, but it won't get a twin turbo V8 like the old C63. Instead, AMG is going hybrid. 
Yep, the new car will get a two litre four cylinder engine from the A45S with an electric motor attached to it. Combined, they'll produce around 550 horsepower, which is about 40 horsepower more than the old V8 version makes. And there's a chance it'll come with four wheel drive as well, just like the new BMW M3. But the new C63 probably won't go on sale until 2022 at the earliest. If you want to see more about the new C-Class, I'll put a link just popping out there in the top right corner of the screen. Click on that and you can watch my in-depth video on that car. Now that's not all, because AMG is also working on a new S63 version of the new S-Class. This will keep a twin turbo V8, but it'll also get a new hybrid system attached to it. So it could make as much as 800 horsepower. And this same hybrid system will make its way into the facelifted AMG GT four door, which should be revealed sometime next year. McLaren has been using V8 engines for years, but it's just revealed a car with a completely new three litre twin turbo V6 called the Artura. It produces 680 horsepower and it only weighs 1,500 kilograms. I say only, but that's not bad for a supercar. Anyhow, it can do 0 to 60 miles an hour in three seconds flat, and it'll only cost you around 185 pounds. Once again, 185,000 pounds is a lot, but it's sort of affordable for a McLaren. Nissan has just released a new cash card, and if you want full details on that car, I'll put a link popping out in the top right corner of the screen. Click on that, or on the link in the description below, you can go find out more about it. However, this isn't the only new Nissan. It's also making a new electric car called the Aria. This will have 310 miles of range and will come with one or two electric motors. The dual motor version should be pretty blooming quick because it'll have a combined 394 horsepower. That's more than any other Nissan besides the GTR. The Aria should go on sale sometime next year and it'll probably set you back around 40,000 pounds. Peugeot is getting ready to reveal a new 308 hatchback. This will look similar to the new 208 and 508 and should go on sale in early 2022. There's no news on a 308 GTI model yet, but Peugeot will release a high-performance version of the 508 called the PSE. This uses a 200 horsepower petrol engine plus a 110 horsepower electric motor to drive the front wheels. Then there's another 110 horsepower electric motor that drives the rear wheels. That means it's four-wheel drive, and it should be able to do 0 to 60 miles an hour in 5.2 seconds. But these cars won't be cheap. Now, don't be surprised if they end up costing more than £50,000. So that's more for a Peugeot than a BMW M340i. But which would you have? A fast Peugeot that's a hybrid or an M-tuned BMW? Let me know what you think in the comments. Go on. Polestar is going to make a production version of the preset concept from last year. This electric four-door coupe should look stunning and have the performance to match its looks. Polestar hasn't revealed any stats yet, though, but it should come with at least two electric motors and have a range of around 300 miles. And you can bet it'll be quicker than the Polestar. Star 2, which already does 0 to 60 miles an hour in 4.7 seconds. Although I've actually tested that car and it did 0 to 60 miles an hour in 4.2 seconds. Renault is working on two new electric cars. There's a Super Mini inspired by the classic Renault 5 and a new megan sized electric hatchback. So these will probably share the same electric technology, which means a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, which will give a range of about 260 miles and a 220 horsepower electric motor, which will be good for 0 to 60 in around nine seconds. Now, Renault hasn't said when these cars will actually go on sale, but you can bet they'll arrive before the end of 2022. Skoda's already revealed the new Enyaq IV, or should that be five? I don't know. I don't know. Ivy, I think it is. Anyway, they've unveiled the Enyaq, haven't they? And it's pretty much a Volkswagen ID4 with a different body. So it comes with it to 316 miles of range and you can get it with one or two electric motors. But there'll soon be a new coupe version of that car and a quicker VRS model. So the VRS will have around 306 horsepower and be capable of 0 to 60 miles an hour in 6.2 seconds. If you want to get your hands on one, it will cost you more than £50,000 for a Skoda. Do you really like the new Volkswagen Golf R, but just wish it was a bit more practical? Well, don't worry, they're doing another estate version of the car for the Mark 8 as well. So it'll get the same two litre four cylinder turbocharged petrol engine as the normal hatchback. It'll put out 320 horsepower and should be capable of 0 to 60 in under five seconds, according to Volkswagen. Now I've actually timed the new Golf R from 0 to 60 miles an hour and it did it in four seconds dead, which is nuts. The assault will probably be a little bit slower because it's heavier, but the trade-off is it's just more practical. So this new car should arrive 
sometime next year. Now, if you're interested in EVs rather than pulling Gs in your petrol-powered hot hatch, well, Volkswagen will launch a couple of new electric cars in the next few years. First up is a coupe version of the ID4 called the ID5. And there's also a bigger seven-seat car called the ID6 in the pipeline. These will use the same motors and batteries as the ID4. So top specification cars will get 306 horsepower and a range of around 300 miles. Volkswagen has also teased photos of a convertible version yeah, a convertible version of the ID3 that it might put into production. Might, might not. We shall see. Anyway, it could also make a high-performance R version of the ID3 with more than 300 horsepower. Although it'd be a few years before you see either of those cars in the metal. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. Click on those windows there for more videos and on that box there to sign up to the CarWow newsletter and that'll keep you up to date with all the latest car news in between these video uploads. Thanks for watching.